All right, let's now analyze the NASA manifesto that was unveiled last night, just a day after Jubilee launched theirs. In studio joining me is Washington Marco Dingo and Joy Brenda Devo. Thank you very much for coming in for Worldview. For Thank you, you for Washington, us. straight into it. What was the one thing that you picked out of that manifesto? Three things, actually. Mm -hmm. <coughs> one, that uh, NASA wants to amend the Constitution to create a job for the Pentagon, you know, to, make, uh, to create a, an executive prime minister for Salim Mudavadi and two deputies for Wetangula and uh, Ruto. And Ruto. Yeah. Of course, it, in its structure, because they, they're saying they want to go back to the hybrid system that was in Bomas, mm -hmm. which essentially had a moribund president and an executive prime minister who is head of government, chairs cabinet, and you know, mm -hmm. runs government affairs. So technically, we are going to have NASA wants us to elect a president who is not going to actually run the country. Yes. Yeah. Uh, someone who is going to run the country is now the campaign manager mm -hmm. for the NASA presidential campaign, which is a ridiculous thing given that we spent so many years negotiating the mm -hmm. constitution and finally passing it in 2010. The second thing that I saw about me, is, I mean, the only thing they said about me is actually, was that uh, they will uh, establish collection centers in yes. every ward. One then wonders uh, what they'll be collecting since mm -hmm. we don't have maize to begin with. Mm -hmm. Because part of our problem... Well, that is, is in is, the is, event we get yeah. maize. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but know? people are <laughs> suffering now. If they were to be elected, they'll take power mm. on August, uh, August 9th, mm -hmm. around a week after August 9th. So you, you're wondering mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what the solution will be. And then the third thing, for the longest time, everyone in this country has been talking about youth unemployment. Yeah. Yeah. And NASA keeps talking about our jubilee has done nothing on youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. Do you know what their solution is? They want to establish, they want to give loans to youth to establish car washes mm -hmm. in, you know, in, in their localities. There is no problem with that if that was a manifesto for an MCA. But when you're talking about a national government promising that the solution they have mm -hmm. for youth is to open car washes. So I'm imagining that if you are an engineering uh, graduate or a student, maybe there will be an opportunity for you to utilize the Archimedes mm -hmm. principle in displacement of water oh, well, in the water the, machine. The idea is to yeah. offer funds for youth to come up with small no, businesses. Not, uh, no, yeah. this was very specific. That's the only specific thing they have. <laughs> yeah, That they'll offer youth loans to open car washes. Mm -hmm. This is what MCAs are doing. This is what MPs are already doing. In fact, we have enough car washes. Okay. So I'm imagining that uh, the job of youth, the solution to youth is to these guys, after they have created these positions for themselves mm. with huge motorcades, okay. will be to be stopping by so, so that then youth can watch. All right, so those are the three th things you picked out. What yes. did you pick out, Joy? <laughs> for me, there's one thing that stood out for me. There was a suggestion that um, we're going to have, I think it was an extra lane for Buddha Buddhas mm. on all the roads. And like uh, Mark Odingo, I'm wondering, okay, if you're thinking about Buddha Buddhas as the way out for the youth, we don't really have a vision, a big vision for them. I also noted that they, there's a suggestion to increase the funding to the counties to, I think, 45%. 45%. And at the same time, there is the promise of the free secondary education. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's the promise of uh, increasing the maize yield. But in the entire manifesto, mm -hmm. there's also the provision that we are going to lower PE. And I'm wondering how then are we going to pay for all this? If a conversation we're having now is already national debt, mm -hmm. are we looking at then more debt under the NASA government? Yeah. That's another thing that stood well, out Well, they've me. also promised to lower the uh, debt limit to about 3% of our GDP. So how are we going to finance all, this, uh, all these activities and all these promises that we're making? How is government going to run? Because there, there has to be somebody who has to crunch the numbers. The other thing that stood out for me was in regard to secondary education. So we say by the 1st of September, mm -hmm. there'll be free secondary education for everybody in Kenya. So how exactly are we going to finance this? Parliament will not have sat. There's no budget that will have passed. How is it going to be done? By executive order, by fiat? How, how are we suggesting to move this forward? So when I read the manifesto, you could tell it was um, a pie in the sky manifesto where we are describing what we'd like to see in Utopia. But I don't think a lot of process was put into the how question. Because a manifesto, in all honesty, is supposed to be telling us, when we get into government, this is what you expect. <coughs> but promise me something realistic. This is something we've been saying with the Jubilee 2013 manifesto. Some of the things that they, all, that they were promising, well, surely uh, 
yeah, it was over ambitious. Mm -hmm. And, and now that is biting them, them because the scorecard. Yes, because the scorecard is against that. So it, some of the things NASA is offering, it will be impossible for them to do because the law is against them. The constitution does not allow. Changing the constitution is not as easy as all that. And at the end of the day, do we have the money to even get into another referendum mm -hmm. to create jobs for three people? So it's one of those things, when I, when I looked at the manifesto, I was a, I was a bit, not underwhelmed, I was actually disappointed. Because I looked at like, can we have a credible, something to hold on to, something to even copy, if it's copying, that we can say, okay, fine, this makes a lot of sense. But for me, I, I looked at it, was like, ah, oh, it's, it, it's, 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 it's not realistic at all. Mm -hmm. Putting them together with what we saw uh, Jubilee launch uh, the other day, how would you analyze those two events? <coughs> Uh, the events or the manifestos? The manifestos, sorry. The manifestos. Uh, I, I thought the events. The events <laughs> were, 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 were grossly and under, underwhelming, both of them. <laughs> Jubilee, when you're looking at Jubilee, it's, it's difficult to look at the manifesto in isolation. Because then it's a manifesto that uh, supposedly continues the work that has been done over, over the last year. So they say this is our scorecard mm -hmm. and this is what we intend, how we intend to continue to improve it. So that when Jubilee says, that we provided free maternity, mm -hmm. uh, you'll go to hospital, you'll give birth and go home. Now we want to extend it for a period of one year so that you decide whether how long prenatal will take and how long postnatal will mm -hmm. take. It is something you can, you can see. You, you will question how it's going to be funded yeah. because uh, free maternity has had its own problems. But it's something that you think will be realistic. When they say that uh, they want to create digital jobs for youth, mm -hmm. yeah, and they tell you that 15,000 have already been trained through the Ajira uh, digital program, then they say they want to expand that, then it, it makes sense, yeah? To some extent, it makes sense. When they say that uh, they want to have internships uh, for all graduates, uh, the law has been there in, since 2015, uh, December 2015. It was supposed to have been implemented beginning of uh, 2016. The implementation hasn't gone as well as it should have because uh, there wasn't a proper framework mm -hmm. with the, the, uh, the private sector, yeah. because that is where all these jobs will, will, will be created anyway. Uh, but they say that now they have had an agreement, mm -hmm. an MOU with, with CAPSA, and a lot of these graduates will be uh, absorbed. <coughs> of course, we still have the question of skills match, because then a lot of, nearly half of the graduates we get out of universities uh, cannot be employed anyway. Really, so uh, that that's is something that long term has to be sorted out. When they say there is free secondary education, if they had said it was September, would have said it doesn't make sense because there's no budgetary provision for it. Uh, but then you know they'll go they go ahead and say we'll do a supplementary budget, we'll do this. I mean they say free secondary education, it's free tuition, yeah. So because boarding is not a priority, the priority for both sides from what I have seen, mm. is to transition, to, to uh, make transition be 100%. And NASA wants to abolish KCP, mm -hmm. so that then there is no, the, you transition automatically. The problems with that, uh, with 100% transition, is that we don't have the infrastructure. So I would assume, if I were to implement it, I would yeah. assume that the, sec the primary school will then have two, three, four more classes, mm -hmm. so that you finish class eight and you don't have to do an exam and go to form one. <coughs> of course, then it has difficulties on how then do you decide who goes to Alliance, who goes to Mangu, who goes to the provincial schools or to the county schools, because then they don't have the primary schools attached mm -hmm. to them yeah. where transition will be seamless. Yeah. So there isn't a lot of thought that went through abolishing KCP mm -hmm. per se in terms of implementing basic education, yeah. but for both sides, basic education for me okay. is something that so makes So we're coming back to see the kind of uh, radical things uh, that would happen, the radical decisions that they will be making in their 100 days in office, if at all they are elected. But let's take a look at some of the pillars uh, that form that manifesto by NASA on our Super Well, some of the major pillars there are nation <coughs> building, state building, transforming governance uh, in the country, realizing social and economic rights, creating jobs, uh, and eradicating poverty, as well as regional and international cooperation. These are some of the main pillars on the NASA manifesto that was launched yesterday in the evening. And under each of these pillars, there are explanations on how they are going to achieve the specific things. Like, for instance, when you take a look at health, they mentioned that they will be establishing a national universal health service fund where you will go to hospital. Of course, every Kenyan will be giving out an amount of money, but you will go to hospital and 
they will not be billing you, but billing that particular fund. How, how is that but realistic? But what's the for difference you? between that and what NHIF is already offering? Because when you, when you have a manifesto that just um, is based on trying to change everything that has happened before mm -hmm. and you want to put in something different, then you get it wrong. Because Kenya, think about it like a company. It's a going concern. The country is not in abeyance or stopped waiting for somebody to turn the, the key on. We are already moving. There are things already in place. The things that were handed over from the Moi government to the Kibaki government, Kibaki government to the, to the Kenyatta again government, and now we are looking at another transition. It's one of those things where I, I wish politicians in Kenya would understand. Even if we are in opposition, we are trying to look at a way to better what Kenyans already have, <clears throat> rather than creating something new. So for me, for example, one of the, the successes I can celebrate in the last five years is in the last four years, that at least now NHIF is doing a lot more than what it used to do, because I've used NHIF for a while. Mm -hmm. And all I could do with it is, when you go to hospital, there's the NHIF rebate if you get admitted. But it was good for nothing else. Now we are hearing all the stories of how people are accessing treatment. All over the world, they're accessing treatment even here. It's going for more than just um, bed. It's now dialysis and other things. Why would somebody want to deconstruct that and set up a fund for which, what else? And one thing that I, even with the Jubilee Manifest, one thing I'm seeing is this push towards having a sort of welfare state where the state takes up duties that um, to make life easier for people, mm -hmm. yes, but are still being paid for by government. <clears throat> we ought to come to a place where we realize government ought to be creating an enabling environment for business to thrive, but for people to make money. I mean, you can't argue the fact that if you've got money in your pocket, you don't care how much the, the dawa costs. Mm -hmm. You'll pay for it and move on. But even if I don't have money, and I go to hospital and I give a medicine and I'm told you must eat before you take this medicine. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing for me to eat because there's nothing for me to make so that I can have food. We have to have a, to strike a balance. Okay. One of the things that yeah. I've, I'm also noticing when we are in this manifesto season is we have to realize in Kenya, for example, I don't see that manifestos do much in terms of swaying how the voters go. Mm -hmm. Because there are other factors that work for Kenyans in terms of persuading them how to go. But one of the things that we see with manifestos moving forward, if we are going to look at what happens to the primaries, is that we are actually having a section of the voters who scrutinize these things, who actually hold their government to account. And this group is actually growing. So it makes sense for the parties to invest in manifestos that they know that even if they cannot score everything on their manifesto, they can defend at least half yeah. of what they have promised. Okay. Something else about uh, the 100 days they would be in office scrapping off the laptop projects and instead building laboratories and uh, libraries. In the first 100 days, they've also said uh, they're getting all the KDF officers from Somalia. Your thoughts? That one, they said 90 uh, days, actually. Yeah. Not yeah, just, uh, just a quick one on the health. Yeah. The truth is that a single illness can drop anyone from middle class to poverty, mm -hmm. to bankruptcy in an instance. So we can't joke about health. I think it's the most revolutionary idea that they have in their manifesto. Mm -hmm. The problem is they are doing what Trump is doing. Yeah? Obamacare was working. You needed to improve it. He yeah. wants to abolish the whole of it because it was Obama's mm -hmm. so that he can set up a, a completely new thing and start from scratch. NHIF is working. It has its own problems, but mm -hmm. it's working. Today, if you have an NHIF card, you can go walk into your chosen outpatient center mm -hmm. and walk out with medicine without having to pay a cent. It's working. Improve it. But more importantly, they keep saying that the national government is withholding funds nationally and not sending it to counties. Health is a devolved function, almost fully devolved, with the exception of regulation and a few national hospitals. Give the money to counties. Empower them. Let them put up the infrastructure. Because if you tell me to go to hospital and be treated, and there is no infrastructure, there are no doctors, there are no facilities, there are no laboratories, then how does that help me? Okay. Yeah? So I, I think... It's an innovative idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, universal health is something that we seriously need to think about as a country, but it's a pretty poor way of actually doing it. Okay. Now, uh, in 100 days pulling KDF out of Somalia. Yes, and, and we, abolishing the laptops. We all know why we went to, to, to Somalia. KDF kept creeping into our country, <coughs> abducting tourists, killing our people. Uh, al al Shabab, sorry. Killing our people, uh, attacking police stations, killing police, and they still do that, despite the fact that we're in Somalia. The truth is, Somalia has no capacity 
to offer security for themselves, which is why we are still there. Now, there might have been a, a few problems here and there, but those problems are being rectified. The argument is that mm -hmm. we have out, outlived our yeah, resourcefulness but for, for, in for Somalia. Those, since 2011, we've been trying to capacitate them. Yeah? They have had, I think, now three elections, mm -hmm. and still they are crawling. Now, we shouldn't be in Somalia indefinitely. But 90 days is reckless, yeah? In my opinion, withdrawing in 90 days is reckless without a plan. Uh, laptop project. Now, the reason, part of the reason the laptop was dropped and the tablets put in place is because a class one child is a five, six year old. You give them a laptop, the laptop is probably heavier than they are, yeah? So it wasn't practical. Mm -hmm. A computer lab is even worse. Can you imagine a five-year-old sitting on a seat where he can't even reach a, 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 a computer and then he's expected, him or she is expected to use it. Now, the reason behind the laptop, the, what we call the digital learning program, and 850,000 of them have actually been dispatched. Not everywhere, because we need quite a significant number, but they've been dispatched. There is a factory being set up both in, in Eldoret and in Thika to support the laptop, the digital learning program. We've spent 13, 14 billion shillings on this project. Uh, uh, contracts have been signed for PPPs. The system is working. It's an interactive system where a child, five, six, can hold the, 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 the tablet and use it to learn. And people, uh, teachers will tell you that that interactive system is actually pretty so good. So for, for you, learning. libraries and laboratories don't make sense? Uh -uh. You can do both. We've already put enough investment into the digital learning program that you can't just wake up one day and oh. discard it because it's jubilees. We are building computer laboratories in every school, by the way. Yeah? If you look at this year's uh, budget, man, there's provision nearly, I think, 1.3 billion shillings that has been put for building computer laboratories in both high schools and in primary schools. You do both so that when, you turn, when the child hits 10, 11 years, then they can be moved there okay. to the computer lab. For you, Joy? But you know that one of the things that NASA proposes to do is to also devolve education. Yes. So even as you're saying you're going to build laboratories laboratories and you're going to build libraries, then you're talking about it being done by the counties because if that devolution actually happens, you know, there's, when we're doing the, the, the drafting of the constitution, in my opinion, the teachers were very, very clever in negotiating that the TSE remains part of national government because that has enabled teachers to continue engaging with national government coordinating the activities in national government, negotiating their pay in national government, because that's where the doctors are finding that they have a hurdle, because they're negotiating with 47 uh, <coughs> governors rather than coordinating just with the CS. So if you tell teachers to be in the same position that they see doctors in, I don't see how that's going to work All right. with, with the TSC especially. And I found it very curious when I saw Socion yes, there yesterday, because I think when he goes back to KNUT, he'll have a few on the, on the hard front questions. Row. Yes, a few hard <laughs> questions to answer, because... You're supposed to be representing us. Why would you go? We fought to remain in national government. Why would you go and suggest that we be deconstructed? All right, I'd like us to end, but quickly, in one sentence, do you think these two manifestos have any capacity of changing the minds of a Kenyan voter? I do, do not think so. The, yeah. the voters who will be swayed by this are those of us who will actually read it. So for the majority of Kenyans, yeah. I don't think it changes anything. For you, do you think it will change? Five percent undecided, I don't think it's going to be on the basis of manifestos. Mm. I don't think so. Mm. Thank you very much. And fortunately, we have to end at that point. Washington, Marco Dingo, analyst as well as governance expert, and uh, Joy Brendam, Diva lawyer and political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Remember, we're also taking a look at some of the other stories that are making headlines and have been captured on the international press. Trix Ingado now joins us for that uh, to just take us through some of the things that have been given priority. She will definitely be joining us for that. We are also waiting for the press briefing by President Uhuru Kenyatta at State House here in Nairobi. It was expected to begin at 9, but we are waiting. We'll definitely be bringing you um, the live coverage on that. Those are live pictures on your screen from State House. Preparations underway for that particular briefing by President Uhuru Kenyatta at State House here in Nairobi. And remember, we will be bringing you that particular briefing live here on KTN News. So don't go too far.